you have your Bible this morning, let me invite you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 13. Uh, We are looking at one verse this morning, verse 44, and we started a series last Sunday called Life Lessons. What we are doing is we are preaching through some of the parables of Jesus. Now, there are over 35 parables of Jesus that you'll find in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Uh, But we are looking at various parables. It's going to take us really deep into the fall. And so we're going to look at quite a few together. But this morning, I want to talk about the hidden treasure. So hopefully you have found Matthew chapter 13 right here in verse 44. You'll notice the parable that we're looking at today. And the Bible says these words. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word today. Thank you for the power of your written word. And today, Lord, thank you for the power of your spoken word. And Lord, we also celebrate today how you are able to speak directly into our lives. And so, Father, wherever we are today, Lord, my prayer is that you would speak to us through the power of your Holy Spirit who is the ultimate teacher. Lord, thank you once again for the the great time that you have given us, Lord, through music. And we pray that today you'd speak to us through your word. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. How many of you have ever found something valuable? As you think back over the course of your life, maybe it was something in a public place or, or maybe something at home that you had been looking for uh, for a long time, but something that was very valuable. Believe it or not, whenever I was 10 years old, I had a dog that was a basset hound by the name George. And I would take George from time to time out of the backyard and and we would go and walk the street behind my mom and dad's home. And we always uh, made a pretty good time together. And one afternoon I took George for a walk and and he had his head down at the right moment. He stopped and so I stopped and I looked down and, and there it was, a $20 bill that was folded up on the side of the road. To a 10-year-old boy, that was a a lot of money. The only problem, I had to split it with him, and so I only got half, but it was a wonderful discovery. Well, it's in this passage of Scripture, this parable, that Jesus tells about a man who pretty much did the same thing. He found a treasure in a field. He was not looking for treasure. He was not searching for treasure. He didn't have his metal detector out here in this field trying to find some new treasure. But you'll notice that he discovered treasure in a field. Vito Nati was a student in Spain. And he was working on his thesis for his doctorate. And in the course of his research, he went through the the books in the library that had to do with the writings of Herrero, who was a philosopher of the 18th century, whose writings had, for the most part, been neglected. And so, after searching for a while, he found a very dusty volume by the author. And it looked like it had not been touched in years. And so as he looked through this particular book, he came across, believe it or not, a handwritten document that had been written by Herrero himself in 1741. And believe it or not, it turned out to be his will. And it said that he was going to give all of his earthly goods to the first person who studied that particular book. The Spanish court declared the will legal legal, and Vito Nati collected nearly a half a million dollars from Herrero's estate. As I think about that, I, I think I need to go to the library more often. In Psalms chapter 119 and verses 162, the psalmist says, I rejoice that your word is one who finds great treasure." There are great treasures that we have in Christ. There are great treasures that we experience as we live out this Christian life. And as we think about this parable this morning, most biblical scholars and theologians tell us that when Jesus told this parable and he mentioned the kingdom of heaven as like treasure, he was referring to the wonderful privilege of discovering, knowing, and following God. 
he was referring to our relationship with Christ, how we discovered, how we have met him, how we follow him with our lives. Wouldn't you agree this morning that the greatest discovery that we can make is to trust him as our Savior and to follow him with our life as you think about your experience with Christ, coming to faith in him, discovering him for the first time, knowing him perhaps for a long period of time or maybe just recently, and following him with your life. Wouldn't you agree today that that is indeed the greatest treasure, the greatest discovery that you have ever found in life, greater than any other discovery that you have experienced over the course of these years. Now, as we think about this parable today, you'll notice what this treasure brings to you and to me as Christ's followers. And the first thing that we find here as we look at Matthew chapter 13, verse 44, is that following God brings joy. It brings joy. Notice this man who found the treasure. The Bible says again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid and for joy over it. This would be very familiar to the listeners of Jesus. As he told this particular parable, once again, a parable was connecting with the audience. They, they knew exactly what he was talking about. Because the practice of hiding valuables in the ground was something that they all did on a regular basis. You see, Palestine had been a battleground for hundreds of years. A lot of battles, a lot of wars had taken place. And scholars tell us that families would often bury such items as food and clothing and money and jewelry into the ground. To them, that was the, the safest place on earth. John MacArthur said over the years, the ground of Palestine became a treasure house. Because all across the land, under the ground, there was no telling what you would find. Now, there are some things that we need to keep in mind about the treasure. First of all, it was left by the owner. At some point in the past, there was an owner of this field who left the treasure. And it's obvious that it had not been buried by the original owner. If so, he would have unburied it before he sold the land. Maybe he couldn't remember where it was. Maybe uh, he, there was something that took place and he could not go back and unbury that treasure. But not only was it left by the owner, but now it belonged to the finder. The rabbinic law stated, if a man finds scattered fruit or money... It belongs to the finder. And so if a person came across a treasure that was lost and whose owner was deceased or, or unknown, uh, the finder had the right to keep what was found. When this man found the treasure, I want you to notice that he responded with joy. The same way you would have responded if you would have found treasure in this field. Look what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 13 verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which a man found and hid. And look what it says. And for joy over it. Here we find the great joy of the man who not buried the treasure, but the man who found the treasure. It shows that there is great joy when we find the treasure. Following God brings joy. Listen, whenever we discover the greatest Savior and the greatest forgiveness and the greatest love and the greatest life in all the world, we too experience joy. Think about the joy that Jesus put into your life in my life, the very moment that we discovered him, the greatest treasure in all of the world, we have never been the same. In Acts chapter 2 and verse 28, we find the early church, God was moving powerfully on the day of Pentecost. He was doing things that were only god size. And the Bible says in Acts 2.28, You have made known to me the ways of life. You have made full of joy in your presence. As, as they would write these words and live this out, they knew that it was Christ who made them full of joy in His presence. Each of us who are 
Christians knows that the most valuable thing in life is our relationship with God. Out of all the things that we have, and all the things that He has given to us, wouldn't you agree this morning that the greatest treasure, the greatest valuable thing in your life is your relationship with Jesus Christ. Whenever you think of the path that you were on before you came to, to faith in Christ, and you think about the moment that, that you realized your need for Him for the very first time, it brought great joy to your heart to think that you have a Savior who brought you to Himself. You have a Savior who showed you the greatest treasure in life, who showed you your need for Him. That joy that only comes from above was placed into your heart and my heart as well. There was a 90-year-old man who approached his pastor after a meaningful time of worship. The man had been blind from birth. And he walked up to his pastor and he ran his fingers over the, the minister's face. And, and then he began to cry. And he said, when I open my eyes for the first time, do you know what I will be looking at? And his pastor said, yes. He said, you will be looking at Jesus. And the man said with joy in his heart, he said, Pastor, he said, it was worth being blind for 90 years to know that the first time I open my eyes, that I will be looking at Jesus. Can I remind you of something? Something that is very powerful in your life and my life. To think about the time that we spent spiritually blind and the moment that God led us to the cross. One of the things we should never forget is what it was like to be spiritually blind. To always remember the life that we lived before we met Christ. To remember what it was like to live in spiritual darkness, unaware, unable to see God, unable to see our need for Him, unable to understand spiritual things, to always remember, I believe it causes great humility in, in our hearts, to always remember our life before Christ because it makes it even more powerful to think about the treasure that we have found. I want you to think about that time in your life when you discovered God's treasure, the Lord Jesus Christ, salvation for the first time. And to think about how that has impacted you every day since. Think about the time that you were spiritually blind. And the moment that God led you to the cross. Seeing for the first time your need for Him. And the life that He wants you to live. Here we find where this particular man found the treasure that was hid. And the Bible says he had great joy over it. In other words, when we find the treasure and we live it out for the glory of God, we will have great joy. Nothing is more exciting in the world. Nothing should put us in a state of more awe than the moment that we discovered life's greatest treasure, which is having a relationship with God. And no matter what happens around us, no matter what happens in our world, no matter what happens today or tomorrow or next week, one thing that cannot be taken away is the joy that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. Our happiness comes and goes. It is fleeting with every single day. It can come today, it can be gone tomorrow, but our joy is founded in Christ and it does not leave. It stays with us throughout our lives. You know, the richest people on earth or those who have found the treasure and they know what they have discovered. They know what they have discovered. And that discovery and understanding fills their lives, fills our lives with God's great joy. It will bring joy. But there's a second thing that we find here in this parable. And I don't want you to miss this as well today. Not only does salvation and finding Christ and living this out 
brings great joy, but you'll notice that it will be costly. Because here we find the rest of the parable in Matthew 13 and verse 44, where the Bible says, He goes and sells all that he has, and he buys that field. The treasure was so valuable that the man was willing to sell everything that he had in order to purchase the land where he had found it. He was willing to purchase that land whenever we find the treasure, the treasure of discovering Christ, the treasure of knowing Christ, the the treasure of following Christ. Nothing will be as valuable as what we have found. And you'll notice in this Christian life, That Jesus calls on you and me to be willing to follow his example. To be willing to put him first in our lives. The question is, is he first in your life? Because just like the man in the parable who found this great treasure, who was willing to go and sell all that he had in order to buy the field, we find that Christ wants us to have the same kind of sacrifice. In Luke chapter 14 and verses 25 through 33, the Bible says, Now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple." And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it, lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish." Or what king going to make war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. Or else while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks conditions of peace. Look at verse 33. So likewise, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Jesus was very clear about the cost of discipleship. He was very clear about the cost of following Him. He always made sure that those who were interested knew of the great price that is involved when you follow Jesus with your life. And here we notice in Luke chapter 14 that He wants us to love Him more than anything else more than our family, more than any other human being. But also, he wants us to think about this commitment, talking about building a tower, talking about a king that's planning on going to war, wanting us to think about this before we are all in, and to also realize that we must forsake all in order to be his disciple. How important is the treasure to you and me. Because Jesus wants us to be willing to give up all that we have if those things are important to us. We must be willing to give up everything. It's interesting to notice that the word all is is used here. In our text of scripture in verse 44, the Bible says he goes and sells all that he has and he buys that field. I want you to notice the word all. That he doesn't sell some of what he has or, or most of what he has. But you'll notice that all simply means all. He sold everything. There wasn't anything left. There, there was no price too high. He was willing to sell everything that he owned. In Matthew chapter 22 in verses 37 and 38. The Bible says, Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Jesus says, This is the first and great commandment. And once again, I want you to notice the word 
all. You are to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with every fiber of our being, from the top of our head to the bottom of our feet, every part of us, God wants us to love Him completely. God wants us to love Him wholly. And here we find in our text of Scripture in Matthew chapter 13 that this man who found this great treasure, discovering, knowing, and following God was more than willing to sell everything in order to buy the field. Aren't you glad today that we don't buy salvation? It is free. The price has already been paid by our Savior when He shed His blood on the cross of Calvary. But we give our lives. We give ourselves to Him. We lay down our lives. Do you love Him with all of your heart? Do you love Him with all of your soul? Do you love Him with all of your mind? Because if you are, then you will be willing to pay the price for the land so that you may have the treasure. Not only does knowing and, and discovering and, and following God bring us great joy, but there is a cost that we are willing to pay, isn't there? We would do anything to follow our Savior, not because we want to be saved, but because we are saved and we love Him with everything that we are, and we're willing to simply give ourselves. We are, with Paul, we talk about in Romans chapter 12, we are willing to be a, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is, not, which is our reasonable service. We simply want to give our all. On April the 21st in the year 1519, the Spanish explorer Ferrando Cortes sailed into the harbor of Veracruz, Mexico, and he brought with him only about 600 men. And over the next two years, they were, they were outnumbered by all of the forces that were coming against them, but they were able to conquer all of Mexico. How was the incredible feat accomplished? When two prior expeditions had failed even to establish a colony of, of, of Mexican soil, you'll notice here's a secret. Uh, Cortez knew from the very beginning that he and his men faced incredible odds. He knew that everything was simply against them. He knew that the road before them would be dangerous and, and difficult. He knew that it was not going to be easy by any means. And he knew that his men would be tempted to abandon their quest and return to Spain. And so as soon as Cortez and his men had come to shore and they unloaded their provisions, he ordered that their entire fleet of 11 ships would be destroyed. In fact, he ordered that all 11 ships would be burned. And so that's exactly what happened. His men stood on the shore and they watched ship after ship be lit on fire and burn. And they watched their only possibility of retreat burned and then they would sink. And from that point on, they knew beyond any doubt that there was no return. There was no turning back. There was no way to run away from this particular situation. Nothing lay behind them but an empty ocean. Their only option was to go forward, to conquer, or to die. As we close today, I want to remind us that the greatest price for the treasure is a willingness to give our lives to Him. To truly say, Lord, I'm willing to give my all to you because over 2,000 years ago, you gave your all to me. But not only that, but Lord, at some point in my life when I trusted you as my Savior, whenever that was for you, 
Lord, I experienced the greatest joy in all of the world. And because of that, Lord, I'm willing to give you the greatest thing that I have. I'm willing to give you me. I'm willing to give you myself, not my possessions and, and not just my time and, and not just my energy, not just my worship, but Lord, whenever I sum it all up, I am giving you myself. I am giving you all that I have. Look what he says in Matthew 13, verse 44. He goes and sells all that he has, and he buys that field. What Christ wants is you. What Christ wants is me. Would you give yourself for the treasure? It gives us great joy. But you'll notice as well, it gives us great sacrifice. As we close this morning, there's some ways I believe that we can live this out. And the first way is, is very foundational, and it's this. We need to discover God's treasure. We need to discover God's treasure. A question this morning is, do you know Him? Has there been a moment in your life where you have asked Christ to be your Savior and to be your Lord, where He has forgiven you of all of your sins? Not do you know about Him, not have you heard about Him, but is it personal where you have experienced the greatest treasure in all of the world, and that is a relationship with Jesus Christ. This morning are you following him? Is he your greatest pursuit? And then secondly. Not only discover God's treasure. But live in joy. Because as I mentioned earlier. Happiness flees with circumstances. We can be happy today. And, and unhappy tomorrow. In fact we can be happy right now. And unhappy in just a little while. It comes and goes. But joy. Joy. It's found in Jesus. Are, are you living in that joy? The joy that does not stop. It is unstoppable. A joy that is not based on our conditions, our circumstances. Maybe you're a Christian today and, and you've lost some of that joy. And God wants to remind you of all that he has done in your life. Most importantly, that moment of salvation. To take you down a trip, uh, down memory lane. And to remember that moment when you experience the love and the grace of God. Maybe that's where you need to go today. To remember that all that Christ has done in your life. To think about the journey that you've experienced since that moment when Christ became your Savior. Are you living in that joy? This morning, discover God's treasure. Live in joy. But thirdly, I want to encourage you to surrender and resurrender to Christ. We should regularly recommit ourselves to Him and ask ourselves is there anything or anyone that we have put above Christ? Am I giving my all? I hope that word all will just burn in your heart today as you ask yourself, Lord, am I giving my all? Am I giving you all of myself? Because he longs to be first. And so this morning, I hope you'll discover God's treasure. I hope that you will live in joy and that you will daily surrender and re-surrender to Christ. This morning, if you would like to trust Christ as your Savior, or perhaps you would like to make some kind of decision, I, I hope that you will let us know. I hope that you'll go to our website, FBCY. Dot com, and I hope that you will email me and let me know that, that you want to become a Christian. You want to experience that joy. Or maybe you're already a Christian and you are making a commitment to surrender or resurrender to Christ this morning. I hope that we will hear from you on this Lord's Day. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this day you have given to us indeed. And thank you for the power of your word. Thank you for the joy. Thank you for the surrender and sacrifice that you allow us to, to put forward. And I pray, Lord, that this treasure, the treasure of knowing and following and experiencing Jesus Christ in this life, I pray, Lord, that we would never 
ever get over the fact that you love us so much and that you have forgiven us of our sins. May we truly give you our all once again, not so that we can become a Christian, but Lord, because we are one and we have been overwhelmed by the love and the grace and the mercy of Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for all that you have done. And Lord, thank you for the greatest treasure in all of the world. It's in his name, the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we pray and we ask all of these things. Amen.